welcome back to SV Basic. As you can see by the smile on my face, I'm enjoying the nice weather. A couple more days of this, and then back to the old rain and wind. It's coming, so let's take advantage of this. Last week, we started prepping the sugar scoops, getting ready for the steering to go in. A lot of work needs to go behind the scenes. A lot of preparation needs to happen inside there. Got a good jump on it last week, but we're gonna continue this week and start filling in some of the gaps there. So let's get going. Got a lot to do. Looks like the epoxy fired off overnight. That means I get my little sanding session. Sand everything down. And start the next little bit of work in here. First I sand. This is a little bit of a mess. While Teal is sanding out the other inside of the sugar scoops, I am going to help him by clearing out this side so that we can start prepping on here. So all that's left is the anchor and another box. I've already pulled out all the fishing gear, crab pots, wires, tarps, and let's see. Oh, this is heavy. Just trying to get an idea of what is in here. We gotta start getting more organized. And looks like we got zincs belts, filters, more filters, yep, more filters, some wire furnaces, and looks like an extra pump. Haha. <gasps> These are keys to the engine that has been missing for over a month. Teal swore that it's on the boat somewhere and I didn't believe him because he couldn't remember where it's at which is really strange that's not like him to forget keys and where they're at but I think that he'll be really excited that I found them Look what I found. Where did you find them? Where do you think? I have no clue, I've been looking for them for months. <laughs> I know. Oh, thank God, I was gonna order some new ones. Do Where I get were a they? Reward? Where were they? It was it with all your fuel filters and belts and uh, pumps. Really? Why would it be in there? That's not like you. Crap. Well, I'm glad you found them. <laughs> what are you trying to embarrass me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, thank you so much. I know, this was actually a relief. That made my day. Next thing I want to do is run some glass over this surface and that'll tab it to the wall right over my epoxy fairing here. It'll tab over the seam, up the wall, up this wall, and I'm not going to tab it over this onto this surface yet. I'll wait till I get this structure built and continuous pieces will come over and tie this whole thing together. I do need access through it though, so I will be putting an inspection hatch in here. It'll fit right about here. And I need a good size inspection hatch because there's linkage mounted right in here and I need to be able to get my arms in and make adjustments or uh, do maintenance. But mostly to get it all installed. This wall is going to be made with honeycomb composite. It'll fit right in here flush with this. 
but I, this is raw. I do need to glass this, and that's why I'm gonna cut this next. Because I could glass this and glass this at the same time. Save on rollers and gloves and plates and bowls and all the things you need to do glass work. After this is all glassed in, I will cut this inspection hatch, and that will be the cutout right there. This is a template. I've used that same inspection hatch a couple times. Made a template years ago, kept it, and I'll use this again, I'm sure. So let's get going on forming this piece of honeycomb so I can start glassing it in. Cutting nitocore or canicore, any one of these polypropylene honeycomb, is easy when it's raw. I mean, this stuff's just lightweight. I mean, this is just ounces right here. You just need a good sharp knife. I just give it a little score right on my mark. then try to plunge all the way through on the next one. Just keep your blade perpendicular to the work. And there it is. Missed a few fibers right here. But look how clean that cuts. Okay, there's my first mark. Now I'll lay out the rest. Okay, I have whittled my honeycomb in. Let's see how it fits. That looks good. And then I made this funny little piece, which will go right over here. And that's to continue this raised lip. So I have a nice shelf up here. I'll still laminate a three-quarter inch bull nose up here out of probably that foam filled PVC and bring cloth up and over, tie it into the upper deck over this and tie it down here. But I wanted to get this all cut out first so I could get layers of cloth on both sides going. At least two layers on, on the inside and the outside right now. And then more once I start laminating this in. So let's get going on the epoxy end of this. Okay, back in here. I'm ready to lay my first layer of cloth down here. Nice and clean. Here's the cloth. I've got my baby wipes, a roller, scissors, and epoxy. It's West System, and I used a 205 hardener. It's a fast hardener with a little bit of white pigment in there, just so I could see it rolling out a little easier. getting this in here, but we'll manage. here. Just give it a couple tugs. I want to get it as close as I can before I start rolling. Usually it'll lay down much faster than this, but I'm kind of jamming this into a corner here. Thank you. 
First layer's in. I'm gonna let that fire off. And we'll put two more layers in. But let's move out and put that layer of glass on this panel. Here's that piece of honeycomb that I carved out. This will be much easier than the piece I just laid down in there. It's all out in the open. So I just need to butter this up, fold my cloth onto it, and make sure it's saturated. Now just roll out a nice even coat. And this one will be done for today. Okay, let's take a look at this now. Cloth is all saturated and laid down nicely. You're gonna see a little bit of a stipple from that honeycomb, but each layer, I'll sand it before I put the next layer on, sand it, put the next layer on. By then, three layers, you don't see it at all. But I'm happy with this first layer here. I'll trim all this off in the morning. Test fit it, make sure everything uh, laid up correctly. Flip it over and put two layers on the backside for tomorrow. Then back in the hole. God, still loving this weather. Look at that. Gonna call it for tonight. Take it easy. Good morning. Another beautiful day. That means that we're gonna take advantage of more epoxy work. Here's our piece I laid up last night. It is cured. So I'm gonna trim off all this glass that I ran wild. And then lightly sand that edge and test fit it down in the hole. I put that piece in last night as well. We'll trim that up and just kind of see where everything stands. Then we'll flip this and get some glass on the other side. Okay, coming off nice and smooth so far. Okay, I'll sand it up. I didn't sand the face yet. I'm gonna do that at the end, but the edges are all prepped and ready for me to test fit this. I just realized my piece is starting to resemble the state of Oklahoma. Huh. Okay, well let's go see how she fits. Okay, back down in the sugar scoop. Here's that piece of honeycomb I laid in. I laminated some glass on here, tabbing it into the wall into the bulkhead here, over into the hole, and just kind of tying it all in. Also tapped it over this seam here. I still have probably two more layers going on this, but it's a good start. Let's get this trimmed off right now, sand it up, 
and see if uh, Oklahoma fits. Nice and smooth. Let's see how she fits. Hey, not too shabby. Nice even reveals everywhere. Just enough to get my thickened epoxy in there. I'll fare this in with a one inch radius. Put a bull nose on the top and a sweep glass cloth over this whole thing. But first, while it's loose, Let's get a couple layers on the back side. Much easier to work while it's out. That way I could get another layer in here today too. So much to do behind the scenes here, but it's gotta be done. Morning guys. We are on a supply run to fisheries because we are running low on everything. So, say good morning Emma. Morning. And you know that you're a boater if you use your car as storage for your rudders until you get to that next project. <laughs> yes, they'll be there another couple days. Sorry about that. I know, Emma's gonna have to squeeze over to one side, but. Like she's getting used to it. They've been in here for I don't a, want her to get used while. to it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here. I think we're ready. process over and over. Flipping the work back and forth. I'm going to try to get two layers on this one today. I don't like to put a lot of layers on one side and then flip it and put a lot of layers on the other side. It tends to take this honeycomb and start to bend it. By doing one layer at a time, look, keep it fairly flat.
like this is our last nice morning in a while. Rain's coming again, so I better take advantage of it. Okay, this cured overnight. Cured nicely, let's trim this up and see how it looks. Now that I've hand sanded the perimeter, I'm gonna give the orbital a nice passing on both sides, flatten this thing out. Actually, it's staying pretty good. By doing one layer on each side, look at this. Let's side down this. Look how flat the work's staying. Nice and flat, no bows, no cups. And that's difficult when you have this, like, this long arm sticking out. So let's sand her up. Sanded nice and smooth. Look at this, I have a layer of glass now with about a 10 ounce cloth on each side. I don't need a lot of strength on this. It's just a, an interior panel. I just trying to make it waterproof and a little durable. But this weighs nothing. These honeycomb structural panels, I mean, it's crazy. The weight to strength ratio. I mean, one layer and I could barely get deflection out of this get a couple more layers on there it's it'd be amazing actually if you want to check out a good YouTube channel check out sailing lady Africa they are doing a refit on an older Dean catamaran in South Africa and they use quite a bit of Nidacore in their process and it's a fun channel to follow check them out okay I'm not gonna bore you with the additional layers I'm gonna be putting on this I still have a couple layers left but I've got plenty of other things to show you so let's get going Okay, back in the sugar scoop. Here's my panel. Here's Oklahoma. I now have two layers of glass on both sides. It's time to start fitting this in permanently. But before I do that, if I plan this out, I'm gonna put it exactly where it needs to go. Plan this out with this wall, just like that. Let's take a look at this. I have an issue. There's still a gap behind this, about 7 sixteenths of an inch. So I'm going to fill that in next. I'm actually going to laminate it to my panel. So when I epoxy this in, this gap will be already filled. Then I'll be able to lay glass cloth when I lay it over this deck, up over the bullnose, and down this wall. It'll tie it all together. So let's work on that next. Okay, for my little spacer, I'm gonna use this PVC lumber. This stuff I use over wood any chance I get. I don't put any wood on the exterior of this boat. A little bit on the interior, but for the most part, we're using all synthetics. We save a lot of weight too. This is very light compared to wood. So I've laid out my little spacer here. Now it's just a matter of cutting it out and laminating it in. Seven sixteenths. That's a nice cut. Huh? I just mixed up one pump of epoxy, one pump of 205 hardener, and a little colloidal silica just to thicken it up. Just gonna put a little thin layer on here. Get this laminated on so I can put this in tomorrow.
I just clean it up with my baby wipes. My little spacer is epoxied in. I didn't want to put clamps on top of this. I didn't want to squeeze all the epoxy out. But just put a couple clamps on there just to hold it nice and straight. While it cures, that'll be cured by morning. Weather's a little gloomier today. It's been raining off and on, but it's not raining right now, so let's get some work done. Here's that piece of PVC I laminated on yesterday. It's cured, it's on there for good. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the end grain and how I treat it. There's a couple ways to do it. You could fill it, or I could take a little piece of this PVC, like I did right here, and just laminate it to the top. I did this last night, so it'd cure enough for today. And this works just like wood now. I could, now that I have a little piece on here, I could, trim it, I could shape it, I could sand it. So I'm gonna put a nice quarter inch round over on either side. That way when I lay glass up and over this, it comes around it nicely. So let's uh, put a bull nose on this. Well, not quite a bull nose, but at least a quarter inch round over. get this thing epoxied in place. I think we've got everything. Let's head on down. Okay, let's take a look at this now before I get this epoxied in. Everything planes out nicely. Everything fits in with nice reveal. I took this end grain and just crushed it back about a quarter inch got this nice radius on the top now. Now the glass will be able to wrap right around that nice and cleanly. Of course it starts to rain. So I've got the hatch mostly closed. I need a little light in here. I've buttered up the perimeter here. Buttered up all the perimeters here. I'm kind of cramped in here. But you can see I've got epoxy on all the edges. I'm gonna set it in place really carefully here. A little tight in here now, but let's start working this panel in. I don't want to get too much going in here right now. I've basically laminated this whole thing in. I've worked this face here, this edge here, and this edge here. I'm gonna let that fire off. Then I'll be able to work this back edge and the side edges over here. I just have enough going on right now. I'll be just making more of a mess as I go. So let's let this kick and I'll come back and finish this off. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, that was a little tough getting that piece in in this cramped quarters with epoxy everywhere and it started to rain right as I was setting it. Just a little downpour. Just wait for this little squall to go by so I could open up the hatch so I could get out without getting too much water on here. Ugh. Suppose I could just hang out here till it kicks. Okay. Looks beautiful now but it's been just dumping out here for two days straight. Gave it time for that epoxy to cure. Let's uh, dry off this scoop, open her up and see what it looks like. Okay, let's take a look at this. 
Look at this panel. It's 100% epoxied in. Nice and waterproof. One inch radius all the way around. It's ready for glass cloth. That's gonna come over this deck, up over this, and then tie it all down into this bulkhead here. Then I'll be able to fare and sand it and paint this whole locker. We'll cut our, our access hatch in. That way it can start getting the linkage going in here. But, I mean, there's quite a bit of work still left in there and a ton on the other side. So that's gonna have to wait. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Every week this sugar scoop's getting better and better. Anyways guys, if you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you really liked it, don't forget to check our Patreon page and the link below. Come back next week to see one of our cool new videos. See you then!